protocol a data miner is used to interact with any kind of data source. This could be a device in your network or an API of a cloud service. Doesn't matter, you can use a protocol for that. Now, if you want to execute specific content in data miner that is not directly related to that product, you can use an automation script for that. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can update your protocol to trigger an automation script whenever you execute an action in an element using that protocol. There are two ways to trigger an automation script from a protocol. I'm going to show you both ways today, but let me first connect to Dataminer Cube to show you the script that we are going to execute. So here you can see that I created a new script called Stream Video, and I'm going to keep using the Singular Live and the VLC elements we already created before. So what my script needs is a dummy of type stream. And then two parameters, the video that I want to stream, which is in a memory file. So there are basically three different movies that I can stream. And then I also need to provide the URL where I want to stream to. So with this script, I just added a C sharp action where I check that my stream is actually active. So the element is active. And I also check that my stream is not yet streaming. Otherwise it's already running and I cannot start it again. Then I retrieve both my parameters, video and the destination. Then I build a command and set that on my stream element. So what I actually wanted to do now in my VLC element, I have this table here. If I right click this table, I want to start streaming a movie. So if I now select stream movie, this actually triggers a script and you can notice this pop up. Why is this popping up? Because I didn't provide any parameter value. So I can now select the video that I want to stream and the URL I want to stream to. In this case, it's this one. And now if I execute this, you'll notice that my stream starts running. Now my stream is running, but what did I need to do in this protocol to be able to accomplish this? So let me open up Visual Studio, where I have opened my protocol XML. I do want to highlight that this is automation training, so I will not go too deep into protocol development, but basically here you can see my protocol, and on the right you can see a tree of all items in there. So the only thing that is visible in my protocol is the table containing my instances. If I want to update or change the right-click menu in my table to something custom, then I can add a parameter of type context menu to my protocol. In this case, I can choose what options I want in the right click menu whenever I right click in my table. And the option I added now is an option to stream a movie. So this is the text that will be displayed inside the right click menu. And then in the options, I need to provide exactly what script I want to execute. There are actually tons of different options available for a context menu, but today we are only going to focus on automation. So here you can see my script name, stream movie, and to provide the dummy, so the element that I want to use, I can actually use this placeholder, this element. If I use that, Dataminer will automatically pass the correct element to my script, because basically my element is linked to this protocol. As you can see, I didn't provide any parameters. That's why in the pop-up, I had to configure the video and the destination myself. Then I can add a tooltip and I can provide some options. In this case, I didn't want any sets that are done on my element to be checked. Basically, the read parameter will not update, so my script would fail if I wouldn't use this option. This syntax should be familiar by now because this is the same syntax that we are using to link a visual shape, for example, to a script. Okay, so now I added this parameter and that's quite basic now. If I now right click, you can see that this option is available. The original context menu, right click menu basically, is still available under the other option. So now let me stop my stream because now I had to do a lot of things manually. I had to, first of all, select the video I wanted to stream and I had to provide the URL. Now, the URL to stream to, where does that actually come from? 
that actually comes from my singular live protocol. So in this one, I have a flow running for my TV studio instance. And here I get the input stream URL. This is the URL that I need to stream my video to in order to be able to add, for example, a logo or a banner on top of that video. I have also updated my singular live protocol. But now what I'll do is in the studio here, select the video that I would like to stream. And then my stream will be running. And you can see that this one is also running. Now Singular Live will start receiving the video that I'm streaming from here. So I'm triggering the same script as I did when I right clicked in this table. But now what I'm doing is actually in the background, in this protocol, figure out first of all the video I want to stream because I selected it in this drop down menu. And I know what URL I want to stream to. So this is running now. So how can I update that in my protocol? To do that in the singular live protocol, I actually need a quick action. A quick action is C sharp code that executes based on or that triggers from any change of a parameter in your protocol. In my case, whenever I change this value in the drop down, a quick action will trigger and I will e execute this method start streaming where I execute a script. Now, how do I do that? I actually do that by using protocol.execute script and providing a script message. In that message, I need to provide the name of my script, some options, and the data miner ID of the data miner, the host where I want my script to be running. In my case, I can just use minus one, then my script will be triggered on the same DMA as my element is located. Now, the script options are the most important part because I need to provide the dummy for my script and two script parameters. How do I do that? I basically need to build a string array of all options that I want to provide and then use this inside my execute script message. First thing I provide is my dummy. I do that by specifying protocol by name, then the name of my dummy, and then the data miner and element ID of the element. In this case, this is the stream element. So in my, via, in my singular live element, I need to fetch the element ID of the stream element and provide that here. My second parameter is passed with its ID. So this is parameter one and I pass the video that I want to use. And my other parameter is not passed by ID, but by name. So in this case, it's the name of the parameter in here. And then I provide the URL. Now there are a couple of different options that you can use. Here, this is a standard option that you can leave at zero because this is some options that are set in the background. So you don't need to worry too much about these. Check sets is set to false. That is the same as I provided here with the no set check. So that means that the sets I do from my automation script are not checked by data miner. And defer true means that it runs asynchronous. What does this mean? When my script is executed here, my quick action will not wait until my script is done. It will just continue its logic as it's implemented. And I don't need to worry if my script actually takes too long or not. Now that my script is executed, I can actually check if it succeeded or not and either log uh, if it didn't, for example. So these were in short, the two basic methods on how you can trigger an automation script from a protocol.